I've never meant to hurt anybody. I never meant to put in jeopardy the Russian population. I never meant to break any laws here. American Brittany Griner asking for leniency just before being sentenced to nine years in a Russian prison. The WNBA player was found guilty on drug charges after being accused of having vape cartridges containing hashish oil in her bag while at a Russian airport. The reaction from President Biden and what Griner's attorneys plan to do next. The U.S. declares monkeypox a public health emergency. Around 7,000 cases have been reported across the country so far. The actions officials can now take as they attempt to slow down the outbreak. The jury reaches a verdict in the penalty phase of the defamation case against conspiracy theorist Alex Jones. He's been ordered to pay damages to the parents of a six-year-old Sandy Hook victim over claims he made that the school shooting was staged. How many millions, a jury says, he owes the family. The Department of Justice has filed charges against four former and current police officers in connection with Breonna Taylor's death. She was killed during a no-knock raid in Louisville, Kentucky in 2020. The false information officials say officers used to get a search warrant to enter her home. A U.S. airman is charged in an attack on an American base in Syria. He's accused of involvement in an explosion that injured four service members, what investigators think he used to cause the blast. A sign of rising tensions following a visit by U.S. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. China is conducting military exercises around Taiwan, test firing ballistic missiles, and the precision strikes prompting reaction from Japan. Showing that the future of our planet's waterways is still optimistic, no matter how it may seem. Hey everybody, I'm Ginger Z, and it's not too late. I say that as I sit in front of just epic crash on the Buffalo Bayou here in Houston. Well, good evening, everybody. I'm Kana Whitworth in for Lindsay Davis tonight, and thank you so much for streaming with us. Now, the U.S. has declared a public health emergency over the monkeypox outbreak with more than 7,000 cases now reported in 48 states. And we'll have more on what that declaration means and how funds will be allocated. But first, we begin tonight overseas, where WNBA star Brittany Griner sits in jail after being handed down a nine-year sentence on drug charges in Russia. Griner has been detained for more than five months already and today was found guilty of intentionally smuggling hashish oil into the country. Griner addressed the judge today before the verdict was announced, holding a photo of her team in Russia and telling the judge that she, quote, made an honest mistake. Now in Washington, President Biden today calling Griner's sentence unacceptable as the administration continues its push for a possible prisoner exchange to bring both Griner and retired Marine Paul Whelan back to the U.S. Griner now facing more time behind bars, thousands of miles away from her loved ones. So where do these negotiations stand tonight? Here's ABC's senior White House correspondent, Mary Bruce. This is the moment Brittany Griner learned her fate. Standing in a cage in a Russian courtroom, hearing she's been sentenced to nine years in a Russian prison camp. Earlier, Griner emotional, saying she takes responsibility for illegally bringing vape cartridges containing cannabis oil into the country back in February, but stressing it was an accident. I made an honest mistake, and I hope that in your ruling that it doesn't end my life here. Griner choking up as she then apologized to her family and teammates in Russia and back in the U.S. I want to also apologize to my parents, my siblings, my Phoenix American Reef organization back at home, the amazing women of the WNBA, and my amazing spouse. During the trial, her lawyers argued there was no criminal intent, but the judge rejected that, finding Griner guilty of drug smuggling. Moments after her sentencing back in Washington, President Biden called for the WNBA star's release, saying in a statement that her sentence is one more reminder of what the world already knew. Russia is wrongfully detaining Brittany. But the White House tonight won't say publicly if they think Russia is trying to send a message by giving Griner such a severe sentence. Do you think she's being used as a political pawn here? I, I cannot ascribe Russian motives or intent here. All I can do is tell you where President Biden is and the national security team. Wrongfully detained, need to come home. There's a deal on the table. Let's make the deal. Let's get him home. 
The Biden administration is urging Russia to accept its proposal to bring Griner and former Marine Paul Whelan home. Sources tell ABC News the offer is to swap the two Americans for notorious Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. Meanwhile, Griner remains in a pre-trial detention center as her lawyers try to appeal. She can hardly talk, honestly, so it's a difficult time for her. And Mary Bruce joining us now. The state of negotiations for Griner's release are being kept very under wraps, to say the least. Have we learned anything new about where things stand? Well, Kana, I am told tonight that the talks are ongoing, but when I press the White House on whether they're seeing any progress, they won't say. They continue to insist that they don't think it's helpful to either Whelan or Griner to try and negotiate all of this in public. The big question now, though, is now that Griner has been convicted, will Russia go ahead and accept the proposal on the table? Or if not, what more, if anything, is President Biden willing to offer to try and bring these Americans home? Kana? Okay, Mary Bruce, our thanks to you. Thank you. And for more perspective on this case, William Pomeranz, acting director of the Wilson Center Kennan Institute, is joining us now. Uh, William, thank you for being here with us. My pleasure. So let's start with this guilty verdict and Griner getting almost the maximum sentence. Uh, did that come of any surprise to you? Unfortunately, it did not come as a surprise. Mm -hmm. uh, Russian criminal law treats drug offenses very harshly. And I was not surprised that it, she got basically the maximum sentence. And does that sentencing reinforce the opinion that Griner is being held as a political hostage? Whether she's being held as a political hostage or not is up to, up to interpretation. Clearly, the only way to get Brittany Griner out of Russia is through diplomacy. And that, those diplomatic negotiations are ongoing. Uh, but clearly, since the Biden administration has made the most serious overtures, the Russians uh, are in the driver's seat in terms of when and how Brittany Griner gets home. And so in your opinion, does the verdict or the sentencing change the way that the United States should approach bringing her home? Unfortunately, there aren't a lot of options. Uh, she has dealt with the Russian criminal system. Uh, the fact that she has been found guilty means that the negotiations can proceed, although she announced that she, her defense counsel announced that she intends to appeal, and that will create further delays. But basically, because now she has a conviction under Russian law, I think the Russians will be more inclined to negotiate, but how fast, I just don't know. Right. And our Mary Bruce pressing the White House today, asking if Russia is sending a message by giving Griner such a severe sentence. Here's the response. Yeah, I can't speak for the Russian judge. Um, and, um, and your question presupposes that it's a message sending exercise. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. So really not much of an answer there from John Kirby, but he also stated that historically, foreigners convicted of drug crimes in Russia receive longer sentences than Russians convicted of those same crimes. Do you agree with that? And what kind of message does that send? Well, it's just harder for a Westerner or a, an American to deal with the Russian judicial system. Uh, and there's no impetus, basically, for the Russian courts to uh, treat the American uh, prisoners with leniency. So I'm not surprised that the West Westerners are treated more harshly than Russians. Uh, and Russians basically are treated very harshly under their criminal justice system anyway. So right. I don't think this would be a kind of a, uh, an excessive punishment based on Russian criminal law. Okay. And so to your knowledge, what do the next few months potentially look like for Greiner? Well, she's going to make her appeal. Uh, that will take some time to work its way through the appellate process. Uh, my understanding is that she will remain in detention in Moscow. Uh, but at some point when the appellate process ends, uh, she will be transferred to a penal colony. And my guess is that she would be transferred to a prison outside of Moscow, and I think it would just, there will just be even more pressure on the Americans to get her out because I think she will be even more isolated when she gets sentenced and 
transferred to a penal colony. Well, it's hard to think about. Uh, William Pomeranz, your expertise is greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. My pleasure. Now to the U.S. declaring a public health emergency over the monkeypox outbreak. The Biden administration is facing pressure to stop infections from spreading as more than 7,000 Americans have now been infected in at least 48 states with New York and San Francisco, the two hardest hit cities. So this emergency declaration frees up funding to increase testing and treatment and boost the nation's vaccine supply. But... Has the Biden administration moved quickly enough? Here's ABC's Janae Norman. After weeks of rising infections and growing calls to do more, tonight federal health officials are declaring the monkeypox virus a public health emergency. We do expect that cases will continue to rise as we've had more access to testing. People have had more access to testing before they go down again. The CDC now reporting more than 7,100 cases across 48 states, up from just 200 a little over a month ago. And vaccines still in short supply as some clinics can't keep up with demand. Everyone's like, how do we get an appointment? So I was able to snag this like right when it came. New York City, the epicenter of the virus, tonight opening 23,000 vaccine appointments. But those are only for the first of two shots needed for full protection. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand calling on the Biden administration to invoke the Defense Production Act. With cases doubling roughly every week, it's paramount that the government prepare a health care system to meet vaccine and testing demands so that Americans can remain safe. Nearly all the cases have been among men who have sex with men, but doctors stress anyone can get the virus. Five children have already been infected. The virus is primarily spread through close skin-to-skin -skin contact, but can also be transmitted through prolonged face-to-face -face contact through respiratory droplets or touching clothing or bedding contaminated with the infected sore. Monkeypox is rarely fatal and symptoms usually go away on their own. I've seen some patients recover from their illness within two weeks, but others, unfortunately, they don't recover until maybe three, four, or even five weeks later. Brian McKenna says his symptoms started with what looked like a pimple on his lip. I then had them on my face and all along my neck. McKenna says he had to fight for access to the antiviral drug t by sending photos of his face to his doctors. The pictures told the story. And when they did get back to me, they said yes. Tonight, experts say right now the risk of monkeypox for Americans is low, but some worry that college campuses could be at risk. This is not a, you know, a classic sexually transmitted infection, but it can be transmitted efficiently through sexual contact. So what that means is that in any dense sexual network, we could see transmission of this virus. And Janae Norman joining us now. Officials are saying that there are more than a million doses going to states right now, but that is still not enough to cover everyone who might need this vaccine. So what are they doing to address that? Well, okay, now here's the thing. The CDC estimates about 1.6 million people are eligible to get the vaccine. Each person needs two doses. So the 1.1 million doses available right now just simply are not enough. We are expecting to get about 150,000 next month. But in the meantime, the FDA says it's looking into whether it can stretch that vaccine supply by pulling five doses out of a single vaccine vial without sacrificing safety and efficacy. And Kana, if they can, that could make a big difference. Wow. All right, Janae, thank you. New developments now in the deadly police shooting of Breonna Taylor. The Justice Department has charged four current and former officers connected to her death. And as ABC's Faith Abube reports, they're accused of lying to obtain the search warrant of her home where she was shot and killed in that raid. More than two years after Breonna Taylor was shot to death in a botched drug raid, U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland today announcing federal charges for four current and former Louisville Metro Police officers. The federal charges announced today allege that members of the Place-Based Investigations Unit falsified the affidavit used to obtain the search warrant of Ms. Taylor's home. Prosecutors say Sergeant Cal Meany and detectives Joshua James and Kelly Goodlett knew the search warrant lacked probable cause. And they say those two detectives later conspired to cover up their lies, allegedly meeting in a garage to come up with a false story for investigators. 
We allege that the defendants knew their actions in falsifying the affidavit could create a dangerous situation. Walk back to my voice! Prosecutors say the officers who executed the warrant at Taylor's home knew nothing about the false affidavit. And when Taylor's boyfriend mistook police for an intruder firing a shot from his registered gun in self-defense, officers opened fire, killing the 26-year-old EMT. Former officer Brett Hankison, who was acquitted on state charges for firing into a neighbor's apartment, today charged with excessive force for firing 10 shots through a window and sliding glass door in Taylor's home. Brianna Taylor should be alive today. Say her name! Brianna Taylor! Taylor's death and the murder of George Floyd sparking protests across the country. Say her name! Brianna Taylor! I've waited. 874 days for today. Brianna Taylor's mother calling the charges overdue. What we've been seeing on day one, y'all learning what we've been seeing was the truth, that Absolutely. they shouldn't have been there and that Brianna didn't deserve that. And Faith Abube joining us now from Louisville. So Faith, if convicted, how much time could these officers be looking at in prison? Well, Kana, three of the officers charged with civil rights violations could face a maximum of life in prison. There's a fourth officer who could spend years behind bars if convicted. Kana. Faith, our thanks to you. And now to some breaking news. A jury in Texas has ordered conspiracy theorist Alex Jones to pay more than $4 million to parents who lost their six-year-old boy in the Newtown massacre, which Jones called a hoax. ABC's Ariel Reshef has those details. Tonight, a Texas jury ordering conspiracy theorist Alex Jones to pay $4 million for peddling the lie that the 2012 massacre at Sandy Hook Elementary School was an elaborate hoax. Members of the jury, have you reached a verdict? The suit was brought by the parents of six-year-old Jesse Lewis, one of the 20 children and six educators killed in the shooting. He's slow. On his radio show, Jones accused Jesse's parents, Neil Heslin and Scarlett Lewis, of being so-called crisis actors. They were subjected to years of harassment, violence, and death threats. I can't even describe the last nine and a half years of the living hell that I and others have had to endure. Jesse's mother confronting Jones about his lies. You keep saying it. Why? Why? For money? Finally, a decade after the massacre, Jones admitting that it actually happened. It was real. It was, especially since I've met the parents, and uh, it's 100% it's, it's real. The parents were seeking at least $150 million in compensation for defamation and intentional infliction of emotional distress. The jury's $4 million award falling short of that. Ariel Reshef joining us now. So, Ariel, this probably is also not the end of this case. Is that accurate? That's right, Kana. Lawyers for this family say that Jones will be forced to pay a lot more than those $4 million. The jury now deciding whether to award punitive damages. This is the first time that he has been forced to pay up for his lies, but it may not be the last. He's also facing a similar case out of Connecticut where he's been found liable. Kana. Ariel, our thanks to you. The dangerous heat is expected to trigger severe storms tonight. So let's get right to Rob Marciano, who is tracking these areas. You're in Rhode Island tonight. Hey, Rob. Hi, Canada. You get, uh, people are just trying to cool off anywhere they can near the water here. But in, yeah. in, in eastern New England, on top of all the heat, we've got a severe drought going on. So there are outdoor water, water bands that are in effect here in Rhode Island. And just up the road in Boston, a new record was set today with a 98-degree temperature reading. Records tied in Albany and in Hartford. Uh, not much cooler tomorrow, although come down a couple degrees. We've got heat advisories up up and down uh, the northeastern corridor there. It's going to feel like 100 degrees in Baltimore, uh, 100 as well in Philadelphia. And a similar story in the Midwest, where uh, heat advisories are up again in Texas, from South Texas to North Dakota. Heat indices will be up and over 100 degrees. Now, you mentioned the flooding. That cold front is slowly pushing into this hot air and very moist, humid air, so it's creating some uh, showers and thunderstorms, heavy rain at times, and flood watches remain posted up and down and across the Ohio River. Valley. They also remain up in the desert southwest for the monsoon that continues in Las Vegas there and red flag warnings are posted for parts of Montana as 30 new active large wildfires continue to burn in the west. Gaina. Well, it's a lot to keep tabs on Rob. Our thanks to you.
Back overseas now, where China is carrying out a show of force near Taiwan following this week's visit from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the island democracy. China conducted a series of military exercises just offshore, including testing ballistic missiles, all to send a message to Taiwan and the U.S. as well. So here's ABC's foreign correspondent, James Longman. Tonight, China threatens Taiwan with its biggest ever show of military force in the region. Beijing launching 11 ballistic missiles in less than two hours, striking targets all around the island, some landing just 12 miles from the coast, the closest Beijing has ever come to a direct hit. All in response to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, which China considers one of its own territories, though the island wants to preserve its own democratically elected government. A Chinese spokesperson declared the visit constituted collusion between Taiwan and the U.S. I hope very much that uh, Beijing will not manufacture a crisis or seek a pretext to increase its aggressive military activity. In an effort to defuse the situation, the White House announced today it is postponing missile tests of its own in the region, an effort to, quote, reduce the risks of miscalculation and misperception. And James Longman is joining us now from London. So, James, China began these exercises today. Do we have any idea on how long this will last? Well, Kena, there's going to be two more days of these drills. I think it's concerning because it shows just how quickly China can launch uh, these sorts of exercises. It also gives an idea of what full-scale military action could look like, most likely some kind of maritime blockade. And I think the situation in Ukraine has focused people's minds. A lot of people thought at the beginning of this year that Russia would never invade Ukraine. And look at where we are now. Kena. Yeah, absolutely. Harsh perspective there, James. Thank you so much. Also tonight, a U.S. airman is being charged now in a recent insider attack on an American base in Syria. Authorities say that he set off an explosive, injuring four American troops. Investigators believe he planted a device at the base. Here's ABC's Maggie Rooley. Tonight, a U.S. airman seen here during explosives disposal training now charged in connection to an explosion in an American airbase in eastern Syria that injured four service members in April. The Air Force filing multiple charges against Technical Sergeant David Wayne Deswan Jr., including dereliction of duty, destroying military property, reckless endangerment, and aggravated assault. The airman has been held in confinement since June. The military initially reporting the injuries were caused by artillery or other indirect fire. But the Pentagon later said the attack was caused by the deliberate placement of explosive charges by one or more individuals on the base. The Pentagon has not released any information about possible motive. Then came a preliminary hearing for the military trials been set for later this month at Hill Air Force Base in Utah. Kana. Okay, Maggie, thank you. And when we come back here tonight, what scientists believe caused this volcano to come alive, boiling and bubbling on a mountainside. Also, a state attorney in Florida suspended by Governor Ron DeSantis over statements he made indicating he would not prosecute abortion cases. Andrew Warren sits down with us to talk about the growing controversy. And plastic pollution is devastating some of our waterways, including this bayou. But some people are getting out and doing the work to help clean up their own communities. Ginger Z shows us why it's not too late. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir. America's number one most watched newscast. Now streaming on ABC News Live. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families Trump. here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Okay, we made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Admit it, these days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. 
The hottest news in daytime are happening right here. We talk about things on this show that people don't talk about. That I can't wait to see. Honest takes from strong women. We need all hands on deck and we need it right now. This is the time to speak out. Unafraid to get real. We stick by our points of view. We're all seeing it differently and that's the beauty of The View. And that's why the most watched number one daytime talk show is The View. Now streaming on ABC News Live. America is being poisoned with fentanyl, and we don't even know it. Just heard my wife screaming. She told me they had just died. 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Keep breathing, come on. It's poison, it's pure poison. A few grains of salt worth of fentanyl will kill you. Just my agency has seized enough to kill the entire country. ABC News Live presents Poisoned, America's Fentanyl Crisis. The powerful series, streaming free on ABC News Live. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Welcome back, everybody. An impressive display put on by this volcano in Iceland, video capturing it spewing this boiling lava from a fissure on the side of the mountain. Officials there saying that the eruption happened after days of rising earthquake activity in the area. So right now, tourists and residents have been advised to avoid the area because of poisonous gases. You might remember the same volcano erupted last year for about six months. And now to the fight to clean up our planet's water and truly make headway is a community effort here. One stream, one river, and in this case, one bayou at a time. Chief meteorologist Ginger Z has this week's It's Not Too Late. I'm Ginger Z and it's not too late. I say that as I sit in front of just epic trash on the Buffalo Bayou here in Houston. But like so many American cities and around the globe, we just have too much single-use plastic. Have no fear though, because right behind me is the BioVac and Bayou Dave. They're here to help. Hey y'all, I get Hello. to say that now that I'm in Texas, right? You're right. On the bayou, the Buffalo Bayou that flows through Houston, that made Houston. This bayou made downtown Houston the birthplace of Houston because of this bayou and being able to take cargo from one place to another. So what have I just got myself into? Uh, you'll soon find out. <laughs> <laughs> that bayou has one permanent fixture that comes every day to vacuum up all the trash. And his name, they call you not just Dave. They call me Bayou. They call you Bayou, Bayou. Dave. Okay. All right, are we ready? This is a man who has dedicated his life to getting the trash out of these waters. Right. Tell me about the, the origin of you working on the water. Well, um, it started with Katrina. Mm -hmm. After Katrina, they needed a lot of people to come out and help clean up. And so I got on with a hazmat company. And when I started working with that hazmat company, that's when I noticed um, after Katrina, we would go to clean oil spills. And when we got there, uh, sometimes we couldn't even get in to get the oil because it would be so much trash. So much trash, it inspired him to join the Buffalo Bayou Partnership, a group that helped Dave acquire this. This is the BioVac. It vacuums the trash. And that is exactly what we helped him do. We found a big patch of plastic and turned the vacuum on. So now, time to suck up some plastic. Yep. Hey, it's some hard work. Car reflectors, coolers, shoes, and so, so much plastic. You ready? Yep. What's like your biggest haul you've ever had? Is that 
I guess you could say 22 trucks. 22 trucks. Yeah, half-ton pickup trucks. Wow. Yeah. That's a lot of trucks. Yes. It's a lot of trash. Plastic pollution is one of the most critical threats facing our planet. We produce nearly 400 million tons of plastic waste each year. Single-use plastic accounts for more than a third of all plastic manufactured every year. The majority of it thrown away. Only about 9% of all plastic products end up recycled. So much of it ends up back in our rivers, oceans, and bayous. The problem's so bad that there's a garbage patch in the Pacific that is twice the size of Texas. Yes, you heard that correctly. And work is being done to clean that all up while people like Bayou Dave are helping to clean their own communities. Primarily, do you see plastic bottles? Because that's what I'm it's, seeing most of. And styrofoam. And styrofoam. Those are the main things. Things are pretty bad on the plastic pollution issue. In 2020, 367 million metric tons of plastics were produced in the world. And experts tell us that this will likely triple by 2050. So we're going in the wrong direction. And it's because plastics are cheap. They're made from fossil fuels and chemicals. It is as if we have an overflowing bathtub. And rather than turning off the tap, we have a little teaspoon. And we keep taking a teaspoon out of the tub at a time. sees the plastics problem front and center every day. How does that even get in there? And for him, it's all about making people aware. It's not just my problem. It's not just the Bayou's problem. This problem affects everyone. A problem that has some alternatives already available, like reusable and refillable containers. It's paper, cardboard, metal, and glass. All of those materials can be made from recycled material and can be put in your recycling bin and easily get recycled. And there's this political disconnect where the plastics industry lobby in legislative bodies to block sensible plastic reduction policies. That's why we'll probably not see a bottle bill in Texas you put a modest deposit on beverage containers and people pick them up. Or they, even better, they don't litter them. So Bayou Dave would have less volume of material to deal with. Now that we're going to go pick up trash, once we get it, where are you going to put it? OK, well, now this trash isn't recycled. This trash is going to go to our bin and be disposed of by waste management. But that's the reason why we were talking about the bottle bill, because this trash is dirty trash. Mm -hmm. And so it's a lot of companies can't, that can't do anything with it. So if we could um, bring in the Texas water bill, I mean bottle bill, then we could get people that would have that incentive. But Bayou Dave's mission and purpose is simple. The earth is not going to change. We're not going to get more earth. Mm -hmm. So if we don't do something with it, we're going to destroy it. Mm -hmm. You know, and this is a, a great opportunity for us to stop rewind and start again. Mm -hmm. And that's what we need to do. We just need to stop. You've heard the stat, more plastic in the ocean than fish by 2050. It's insane to think about, but when you come out on the bayou and you see all this trash in just one American city, you can imagine that we are on our way, well on our way. And the only way that we change this, yes, people like Bayou Dave and all of us are responsible to help clean up what we already have. But environmental advocates insist that we have to stop making and using single-use plastic because then it really won't be too late. All right, that was really enlightening. Ginger Z, thank you. And still ahead here on Crime, the penalty trial for Parkland school shooter Nicholas Cruz leaves the courtroom where the jury was taken today. And a woman and child killed after being trapped inside a burning apartment Why police say an e-scooter is to blame. And some businesses named on a new list may surprise you. We're taking a look at the world's 10 biggest companies by the numbers. But first, our tweet of the day, a heartfelt happy birthday from former First Lady Michelle Obama to her husband, former President Barack Obama. She said in part, happy birthday to my honey. Life with you just keeps getting better every year. You always make me proud. 
All right, here we go. You ready? Let's do it. Yes, it's the show America wants and America needs right now. This is What Would You Do? Let's go. How are you? Can I hug you? Yes. So what will you be watching Saturdays on ABC News Live? What would you do? Hey, I guess I just found out. <laughs> the What Would You Do Marathon, 12 to 6 Eastern, every Saturday on ABC News Live. My favorite show. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 storm. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. America is being poisoned with fentanyl, and we don't even know it. Just heard my wife screaming. She told me they had just died. 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. Keep breathing, come on. It's poison, it's pure poison. A few grains of salt worth of fentanyl will kill you. Just my agency has seized enough to kill the entire country. ABC News Live presents Poisoned, America's Fentanyl Crisis, the powerful series streaming free on ABC News Live. These days, with so much going on, it's hard to keep up. While others are recapping yesterday's headlines, we're bringing you the right now. This is the busy border crossing. Steel barricades, another strike. The right now look at the day ahead, how it affects you and your family. Record high gas prices. The threat of cyber warfare. Is peace possible? World News Now beginning at 2 a.m. Eastern, followed by America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. Streaming here on ABC News Live. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. As of today, in a big way, we have inaugurated abcnews.com. A lot has changed in our world since Peter made that announcement. But what hasn't changed is the commitment to groundbreaking reporting and innovation at abcnews.com. And here's to everything ahead. And welcome back, everybody. Fortune magazine is out with their global 500 list of the world's largest corporations ranked by revenue for the 2021 fiscal year. So let's take a look by the numbers here. And topping the list for the ninth straight year is Walmart, which brought in more than $570 billion in revenue in 2021. But a slowdown in consumer demand this year led Walmart today to announce a cut of about 200 jobs from its corporate workforce. And for the first time at number two on the list is Amazon as the online retail giant raked in nearly $470 billion in 2021 as it saw a boost, you know, in pandemic-fueled online spending. And three Chinese energy giants rounding out the top five. In fact, revenue from global 500 companies from China made up 31% of the total, according to Fortune, surpassing the total for U.S. companies for the first time. And at number six on the list is Saudi oil giant Aramco, which was the world's most profitable company in 2021, and that was before this year's spike in oil prices. Apple coming in at number seven on Fortune's list, while German automaker Volkswagen came in at number eight and rounding out the top 10, CVS Health, which saw an increased store traffic boosted by COVID vaccines and at-home test kit purchases in 2021. And we still have a lot to get here too tonight on Prime. First of all, who police are crediting with trekking through miles of dirt, water, and mud to find three missing boys? And actor Tony Shalhoub reveals whether one of his most popular series could get a reboot and what he has learned from the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. But first, a look at our top trending stories on abcnews.com. at stake in our world right now we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making abc news america's number one news and thank you for making abc news live america's number one streaming news
Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. National parks are incredibly safe places, but crime will happen. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. I know what happened and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart they did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find unless you try to find it. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. A painful day in rushing court for WNBA star Brittany Griner. The judge going on to find Griner guilty of drug possession and smuggling and sentencing her to nine years in prison just under the maximum, plus a fine of more than $16,000. Griner's lawyer saying the verdict left her overwhelmed. She's very obsessed, very upset, very stressed, and she is, well... She can hardly talk. In Washington, President Biden firing off a statement calling that verdict unacceptable. Now the U.S. awaits Russia's response to its prisoner swap offer, exchanging Griner and Russian-held former Marine Paul Whelan for U.S.-held Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. As monkeypox cases grow across the country, the Biden administration doubling down on efforts to control the virus, declaring a public health emergency. President Biden appointing two top federal officials to oversee the nation's response with more than 6,600 cases in the U.S., including several children. Right now, the virus is mostly spreading in LGBTQ plus communities, primarily through skin to skin contact. It's not considered a sexually transmitted disease. Officials urging high risk Americans to get vaccinated. Symptoms include headaches, rashes, and blisters. Most of the monkeypox cases so far have mainly been men who have sex with men, though health officials warn the virus could affect anyone. Prosecutors in Florida resting their case in the sentencing trial for the Parkland school shooter. Jurors toward Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, which had been sealed since the attack back on February 14th, 2018. Reporters who were given access to the site say they saw bloodstains where students were shot and killed. The gunman, Nicholas Cruz, has confessed to killing 17 classmates back on that day. The jury now must decide whether to give him the death sentence or life in prison. Ex-governor of Puerto Rico, Wanda Vasquez Garcet has been arrested by federal agents, now faces several federal criminal charges, including bribery, alleged conspiracy to commit election fraud in connection with her 2020 gubernatorial primary campaign. Vasquez Garcet has reiterated via her legal counsel that she did not benefit financially in any way and is innocent of all the charges. Vasquez Garcet, who previously served as the Puerto Rican Secretary of Justice, became governor in 2019 as part 
to that island's constitutional line of succession once the former governor of Puerto Rico and his vice governor resigned during the backlash amid protests over insensitive comments made in a private chat. When the fire started here on East 129, officials say in this case that e-bike was parked in the apartment entranceway. And after it lit on fire, it trapped all three residents. The three family dogs, Huskies, also perished. 46-year-old father now struggling for his life. This five-year-old daughter and 36-year-old girlfriend sadly didn't make it. Investigators say the cause, lithium batteries in that e-bike seen here damaged. This is Shiloh, a two and a half year old bloodhound who helped save the day when three little boys went missing in Magnolia. Kai and Leo Evans, ages nine and seven, and their friend had been playing on their bikes and decided to explore. The Gloucester County Sheriff's canines were called in. Shiloh led the team about three miles through dirt, water, and mud. We knew she was getting close when she started pulling, you know, faster and faster. The children were reunited with their families and Shiloh was rewarded with liverwurst. And now to Florida, where Governor Ron DeSantis has suspended Tampa's top prosecutor over public statements he made indicating he would not criminalize abortion. Now, since Roe versus Wade was overturned, abortions after 15 weeks are barred in Florida with limited exceptions, and doctors who violate the law could face up to five years in prison. So Hillsborough County State Attorney Andrew Warren is joining us now. Uh, thank you for being with us, Andrew. Yeah, my pleasure. First off, you just finished a news conference announcing a cold case development that you're still on despite the suspension from the governor. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we're going to continue fighting uh, for the, the residents of Ellsborough County to make sure that we're keeping our community safe. And in those cold cases, the victims and their families have been waiting 39 years for justice, and we were happy to be able to deliver it to them today. I know that the governor was trying to create some political sideshow with his latest political stunt, but the reality is that it interfered with our ability to work with these victims and make sure that we were prosecuting two people who have evaded the criminal justice system for the past 49, 39 years for rape and murder that they committed. Well, the governor used a letter, though, that you and other prosecutors from all regions of the country signed to justify suspending you. The letter essentially saying that the criminal justice system has limited resources and that it should not be used to criminalize personal medical decisions. So does that mean that your office couldn't do that or didn't want to do that? Well, first of all, let's talk about the governor's order. Uh, this is a blatant overreach by the governor. He's violating one of the most core conservative, core principles of our democracy, which is that voters, the people get to decide who serves an elected office. I've been elected twice by the voters of Hillsborough County to serve as state attorney, and I've done that, and we've done that job well. We've kept crime down, we've promoted safety, fairness, and justice here. And the governor doesn't get to change that. If he has a problem with the way I'm serving a state attorney, if he thinks he can do better, then he can come and run for state attorney rather than run for president. Well, and so to try and answer my question there again, did that mean by signing that letter that your office couldn't do the job or didn't want to? It's neither. What the letter we signed set forth that in Florida, there's a constitutional right to privacy. And the governor signed the law knowing that it was unconstitutional. They even came out and said, we understand that the courts are gonna you know, overrule on this. We're just gonna hope that they change the law. I'm the one person upholding the law here in Hillsborough County because the law in Florida is quite clear. A 15 week abortion ban is illegal. Governor DeSantis said in a statement talking about your suspension and the new legislation, though, he said that what the legislature has enacted, and it's not for you to put yourself above that. He also went on to say that he feels like you're not going to enforce the laws and that it's not for you to pick and choose. So, so what is your response to that? Again, the governor doesn't get to make that decision. The people get to make that decision, and they've made that decision twice. They did it knowing where my priorities were on violent crime, on people who keep reoffending, on serious economic fraud, and that we focus on prevention and rehabilitation and helping people steer free and stay away from the criminal justice system for low-level first-time offenders. That's what we've been doing here for five years now. Now, in terms of the governor's statement about whether I will or won't enforce the law, 
When I was sworn in as state attorney, I put my hand on the Bible and I swore to uphold the U.S. and the state constitution. And that's exactly what I'm doing. Because under Florida's constitution, that 15-week abortion ban is unconstitutional. And it's not just me saying that. The first court to hear the issue said that. They enjoined that law from going into effect because they said it clearly violates the Constitution. So now the governor's position is, I'm not going to follow a law that the courts have said is unconstitutional, and so now he thinks he can remove you from power, you know, with a stroke of his crayon. It's ridiculous. That's not how our democracy works. Well, so both of you espousing that you're doing what's best for the people that you serve, some calling the governor's decision an extreme abuse of power, which it sounds like you agree with that, but do you also feel like you're just ignoring his law? No, not at all. We are following the law here. We are doing what is required to do to keep our community safe, to protect people's constitutional rights, to promote fairness, to stand up for victims, to fight for justice. That's what I have done every day for the past five years, five and a half years since I was sworn, been sworn into office. That's why I was elected in 16. That's why I was reelected in 2020. This is how our democracy works. Let's be clear. The governor's order today isn't about suspending one elected official from his position. This is order is about an attack on our democracy. And so what do the next couple of days look like for you and months as Susan Lopez now potentially takes over this position? Well, I'm going to do everything I can to continue serving the people of Hillsborough County as I was elected to do. I'm still the duly elected state attorney in Hillsborough County. We have a fantastic office, 300 dedicated public servants who are overworked and underpaid, who do a lot to promote public safety and fairness and justice every day, and have the utmost confidence that they'll continue to do the job extremely well, as they have been for the past five and a half years since I've had the privilege of serving as the state attorney. Well, Andrew Warren, we, uh, we appreciate your time tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. And also tonight, officials are still predicting an above average hurricane season despite a bit of a slow start. So between 14 and 20 named storms are predicted, at least six of those expected to reach hurricane strength. And as many as five are likely to become major storms, meaning at least a category three or higher. Actor Tony Shalhoub has played many iconic roles in his 40-year career, including a detective with OCD on the TV show Monk and an Italian chef in the movie Big Night. Most recently, he's starring in The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel, which just finished its fourth season. Set in the 1950s and 60s, the show follows the journey of Miriam Maisel, a young woman who separates from her husband and starts a career as a stand-up comedian. Shalhoub plays her father, Abe Weissman. Take a look. I am pursuing a career in stand-up comedy. You what? Abe! This is outrageous. How could you do this, Miriam? What a secret to keep from your father. Oh, well, joining us now is Emmy, Tony, and Golden Globe winning actor Tony Shalhoub. Welcome to the show. Thanks. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> We're so happy to have you. You were just nominated for your 12th Emmy, a major achievement, but you also are wrapping up the marvelous Miss Maisel's fifth and final season. My goodness, how does it feel for you and the whole Maisel team being celebrated? But of course, we know, you know, all good things have to come to an end. Yes, that's it's bittersweet, really. I, I we're all going to miss it. I think I speak for everyone. We're all going to miss it a lot. It's just a. Uh, it's a really great ensemble. It's a uh, it's terrific uh, writers, producers to work for. Um, it it's just kind of a kind of a dream job. Then your character Abe Wiseman has had quite a journey. You started out as an esteemed professor at Columbia University with a lovely wife, happily married daughter. So tell us about Abe's journey and how he's who he's become really over the course of the series. Yes. Well, when when um, in, in in the pilot, when when uh, all of this stuff happens to Midge, to to Abe's and Rose's daughter, um, her life just there, it's just thrown into chaos, and um, she has to kind of reinvent herself, which was not easy uh, for a woman, uh, certainly of that period. Right. But, um, there's been a ripple, a ripple effect, and 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 so every uh, all the upheaval that was caused. 
uh, by her her life, you know, getting thrown into turmoil, um, has has had an effect certainly on my character. Started out in a very stable kind of position at Columbia, and now, after a number of seasons, he's uh, wound up as a theater critic at the Village Voice, and um, a very unlikely uh, position for him to have taken. And we, of course, you know, living through the pandemic. Miss Maisel, though, stays entrenched in an entirely different era. So what is it like for you, who lived through the 60s, to sort of step back into that world? I mean, the clothes, I particularly love them. The accessories, the classic cars, of course. Yes, the, the, the clothes, the cars, the, just just being in, a, in this... Um, in this time period, I was a, a kid uh, during this period, but um, I, it just, it brings it all back. I love doing a, a series like this where there's no cell phones, there's no, you know, personal yeah. computers. Uh, there's not all of that technology. Um, I, you know, the phones, even in our apartment and the show are, they're not even cordless. You know, you, right. you're hanging on a wall. A simplicity to it, right? Sure, sure. Yeah. So the final season of The Marvelous Miss Maisel is coming soon. I'm sure that you can't give away any spoilers, but is there anything that you can share that you want fans to look forward to? Well, as, as, as strange as it sounds, uh, and, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, I think the fifth season is just going to completely outdo the, ah. the first four. You know, what's interesting about... Uh, one season ago, we moved from the late 1950s into the 1960s. So there's this entire cultural shift going on in the country. And mm -hmm. the show reflects that that transition. And and now I just feel like season five is, is going to be, you know, the one that people are really, really going to remember. I can actually see your excitement. Good for you. And before you go, of course, you also start in the critically acclaimed series Monk sort of combined comedy with mystery, following an ex-police officer turned detective with OCD. Any chance that Monk maybe gets rebooted in some form? Well, there, yeah, actually, it's interesting <laughs> you right. ask that. We're having, uh, we're having conversations about that. There's, I think there's something in the works. You know, it's been, uh, what, geez, 13 years almost since we wrapped that show, and, um, I, I'm kind of fascinated, to, to, just really, really curious to see what it'll be like to revisit it. Oh, lots of good things coming your way. Tony, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Great to be with you. All right, and the first four seasons of The Marvelous Miss Maisel are available on Prime Video. And before we go tonight, we have the image of the day for you. It's a black ribbon adorning the nameplate of late Congresswoman Jackie Walorski at her office in the Cannon House building at the Capitol. The 58-year-old representative and her two staff members were killed in a car crash yesterday in her home state of Indiana. And that's our show for this hour. Please stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thank you for streaming with us. Coming up in the next hour, four former and current officers charged in connection to Brianna Taylor's death. The new developments about the search warrant used to get into her home in the first place. And more details on what happened the moments before a crash that killed an Indiana congresswoman. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7, there for you with one touch. The ABC News app, download Load it now. With so much at stake in our world right now, we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making ABC News America's number one news. And thank you for making ABC News Live America's number one streaming news. 
he thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7 is showing up this KGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. So what's good to read this summer? Well, Kate and I have decided to jump in and help you. And we're talking with Oprah, John Irving, and so many popular authors and influencers. So we want you to join us. Myself, Charlie Gibson, and my daughter, Kate Gibson. Oh, hey, that's me. That is, that is you. For the new podcast series, it is called The Bookcase with Kate and Charlie. We will make sure you love what you read. Listen anywhere and anytime. The Bookcase Podcast, wherever you get your podcasts. And welcome back, everybody. I'm Kana Whitworth, and thank you for streaming with us. We are monitoring several developing stories at ABC News on this hour. The lawyer representing Sandy Hook families in the defamation trial against Alex Jones said he intends to turn Jones' text messages over to the January 6th committee. Attorney Mark Bankston says the committee requested them after they were inadvertently provided to him by Jones' lawyers. Bankston said the various federal agencies and law enforcement have reached out to him about that information. Also right now, we're getting new details on the crash that killed Congresswoman Jackie Walorski and three others. Officials are saying that a RAV4 was carrying the Indiana Republican and her two aides, Emma Thompson and Zachary Potts, who was behind the wheel. Their SUV crossed the center line, hitting another vehicle and killing its driver. It's not clear why the car veered into oncoming traffic. And singer R. Kelly has thousands of dollars in his prison account, but now the funds are frozen. A prosecutor has asked a judge to turn over the more than $28,000 in his account because he's yet to pay any fines associated with his racketeering conviction. The money is now frozen until the judge decides whether to turn it over to the government. In June, Kelly was sentenced to 30 years in prison for racketeering and sex trafficking. And overseas, WNBA star Brittany Griner was convicted on drug charges in Russia and sentenced to nine years in a penal colony. Griner, found guilty of intentionally smuggling hashish oil into the country, addressed the court before the verdict. She held a photo of her team in Russia and said that she made an honest mistake. President Joe Biden has called the sentence unacceptable. ABC's senior White House correspondent Mary Bruce has the story. This is the moment Brittany Griner learned her fate. Standing in a cage in a Russian courtroom, hearing she's been sentenced to nine years in a Russian prison camp. Earlier, Griner emotional, saying she takes responsibility for illegally bringing vape cartridges containing cannabis oil into the country back in February, but stressing it was an accident. I made an honest mistake, and I hope that in your ruling that it doesn't end my life here. Griner choking up as she then apologized to her family and teammates in Russia and back in the U.S. I want to also apologize to my parents, my siblings, my Phoenix American Reef organization back at home, the amazing women of the WNBA, and my amazing spouse. During the trial, her lawyers argued there was no criminal intent, but the judge rejected that, finding Griner guilty of drug smuggling. Moments after her sentencing back in Washington, President Biden called for the WNBA star's release, saying in a statement that her sentence is one more reminder of what the world already knew. Russia is wrongfully detaining Britney. But the White House tonight won't say publicly if they think Russia is trying to send a message by giving Griner such a severe sentence. Do you think she's being used as a political pawn here? I, I cannot ascribe Russian motives or intent here. All I can do is tell you where President Biden is and the national security team. Wrongfully detained, need to come home. There's a deal on the table. Let's make the deal. Let's get him home. The Biden administration is urging Russia to accept its proposal to bring Griner and former Marine Paul Whelan home. Sources tell ABC News the offer is to swap the two Americans for notorious Russian arms dealer Victor Boot. Meanwhile, Griner remains in a pre-trial detention center as her lawyers try to appeal. She can hardly talk, honestly, so 
it's a difficult time for her. And the White House is now staying pretty tight-lipped about those ongoing negotiations. And that was Mary Bruce, our thanks to you. Now to the U.S. declaring a public health emergency over the monkeypox outbreak. The Biden administration is facing pressure to stop infections from spreading. This as more than 7,000 Americans have been infected in at least 48 states with New York City and San Francisco, two of the hardest hit cities. This emergency declaration frees up funding to increase testing and treatment and boost the nation's vaccine supply. But the question is, has the Biden administration moved quickly enough? Here's ABC's Janae Norman. After weeks of rising infections and growing calls to do more, tonight federal health officials are declaring the monkeypox virus a public health emergency. We do expect that ca cases will continue to rise as we've had more access to testing. People have had more access to testing before they go down again. The CDC now reporting more than 7,100 cases across 48 states, up from just 200 a little over a month ago. And vaccines still in short supply as some clinics can't keep up with demand. Everyone's like, how do we get an appointment? So I was able to snag this like right when it came. New York City, the epicenter of the virus, tonight opening 23,000 vaccine appointments. But those are only for the first of two shots needed for full protection. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand calling on the Biden administration to invoke the Defense Production Act. With cases doubling roughly every week, it's paramount that the government prepare a health care system to meet vaccine and testing demands so that Americans can remain safe. Nearly all the cases have been among men who have sex with men, but doctors stress anyone can get the virus. Five children have already been infected. The virus is primarily spread through close skin-to-skin -skin contact, but can also be transmitted through prolonged face-to-face -face contact through respiratory droplets or touching clothing or bedding contaminated with the infected sore. Monkeypox is rarely fatal and symptoms usually go away on their own. I've seen some patients recover from their illness within two weeks, but others, unfortunately, they don't recover until maybe three, four, or even five weeks later. Brian McKenna says his symptoms started with what looked like a pimple on his lip. I then had them on my face and all along my neck. McKenna says he had to fight for access to the antiviral drug t by sending photos of his face to his doctors. The pictures told the story, and when they did get back to me, they said yes. Tonight, experts say right now the risk of monkeypox for Americans is low, but some worry that college campuses could be at risk. This is not a, you know, a classic sexually transmitted infection, but it can be transmitted efficiently through sexual contact. So what that means is that in any dense sexual network, we could see transmission of this virus. And Janae Norman joining us now. Officials are saying that there are more than a million doses going to states right now, but that is still not enough to cover everyone who might need this vaccine. So what are they doing to address that? Well, Kena, here's the thing. The CDC estimates about 1.6 million people are eligible to get the vaccine. Each person needs two doses. So the 1.1 million doses available right now just simply are not enough. We are expecting to get about 150,000 next month. But in the meantime, the FDA says it's looking into whether it can stretch that vaccine supply by pulling five doses out of a single vaccine vial without sacrificing safety and efficacy. And Kena, if they can, that could make a big difference. Wow. All right, Janae, thank you. New developments now on the deadly police shooting of Breonna Taylor. The Justice Department has charged four current and former officers connected to her death. And as ABC's Faith Abube reports, they're accused of lying to obtain the search warrant of her home in the first place where she was shot and killed in that raid. More than two years after Breonna Taylor was shot to death in a botched drug raid, U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland today announcing federal charges for four current and former Louisville Metro Police officers. The federal charges announced today allege that members of the Place-Based Investigations Unit falsified the affidavit used to obtain the search warrant of Ms. Taylor's home. Prosecutors say Sergeant Cal Meany and detectives Joshua James and Kelly Goodlett knew the search warrant lacked probable cause. And they say those two detectives later conspired to cover up their lies, allegedly meeting in a garage to come up with a false story for investigators. 
We allege that the defendants knew their actions in falsifying the affidavit could create a dangerous situation. Work back to my voice! Prosecutors say the officers who executed the warrant at Taylor's home knew nothing about the false affidavit. And when Taylor's boyfriend mistook police for an intruder firing a shot from his registered gun in self-defense, officers opened fire, killing the 26-year-old EMT. Former officer Brett Hankison, who was acquitted on state charges for firing into a neighbor's apartment, today charged with excessive force for firing 10 shots through a window and sliding glass door in Taylor's home. Brianna Taylor should be alive today. Say her name! Brianna Taylor! Taylor's death and the murder of George Floyd sparking protests across the country. Say her name! Brianna Taylor! I've waited. 874 days for today. Brianna Taylor's mother calling the charges overdue. What we've been seeing on day one, y'all learning what we've been seeing was the truth, that Absolutely. they shouldn't have been there and that Brianna didn't deserve that. And that was Faith Abube reporting for us tonight. I'm back overseas now where China is carrying out a show of force near Taiwan following this week's visit from House Speaker Nancy Pelosi to the island democracy. China conducted a series of military exercises just offshore, including ballistic missiles, all to send a message to Taiwan and the U.S. Here's ABC's foreign correspondent, James Longman. Tonight, China threatens Taiwan with its biggest ever show of military force in the region. Beijing launching 11 ballistic missiles in less than two hours, striking targets all around the island, some landing just 12 miles from the coast, the closest Beijing has ever come to a direct hit. All in response to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, which China considers one of its own territories, though the island wants to preserve its own democratically elected government. A Chinese spokesperson declared the visit constituted collusion between Taiwan and the U.S. I hope very much that uh, Beijing will not manufacture a crisis or seek a pretext to increase its aggressive military activity. In an effort to defuse the situation, the White House announced today it is postponing missile tests of its own in the region, an effort to, quote, reduce the risks of miscalculation and misperception. That was James Longman reporting. He also says those missile tests could continue for the next couple of days. And still to come here tonight, why these grain silos came crashing down just as a crowd was headed to the area. Also, how far would you go to spend more time with your kids? Patton Oswalt tells us about his new comedic role as a dad who catfishes his own son. This is ABC News Live. The crush of families here in Poland. At refugee centers. In Putin's Russia. On the ground in Ukraine. Close to the front line. Here at the White House. Destructive. Cat 4 store. Here along I-5. Boston is in the bullseye. Let's go. We made it. ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. Anytime, anywhere. Streaming 24-7. Straight to you for free. Thank you for making ABC News Live. America's number one streaming news. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. National parks are incredibly safe places, but crime will happen. Hey, my mom. My wife is home. She's in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live.
Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. And we are tracking several headlines from around the world tonight as Lebanon marked two years since that deadly explosion at a port. What you're seeing here is several grain silos that were badly damaged during that blast. That's them collapsing. It happened just an hour before protesters were expected to gather there. Several senior officials have been accused of being responsible for that blast in the first place, but nobody's been charged. 220 people were killed. Thousands were wounded in that explosion in 2020, which was caused by stores of ammonium nitrate left neglected at the port. Also, rescue crews in northern Mexico are desperately searching for 10 miners trapped deep underground in a flooded coal mine. They became trapped Wednesday when their excavation work caused a tunnel wall to collapse. Then it triggered flooding. Officials say several hundred people are working day and night to assist in those rescue efforts. And drone footage showing a fire burning on a forested hill in Montenegro. So you can see those plumes of smoke there rising from the trees. It's very close to homes. So far, firefighters have managed to protect any structures nearby. The fire being fueled by a heat wave that has led to temperatures of up to 102 degrees. Parents will go to great lengths to reconnect estranged relationships with their children. But is catfishing your son too far? I Love My Dad is a comedy that explores the depths in which parents will go, and it won the top prize at South by Southwest this past year. And Pat Oswalt is here to discuss the film and his role as the catfishing father who eventually steals his son's heart through a fake Facebook account. Welcome to the show. Boy. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. <laughs> I love it. I mean, this is a really unique premise for a film. Uh, to use a word that I know you love, it's slightly absurd, uh, maybe even cringy, yes. yet extremely well-received. So I know you say in your stand-up that audiences are up to the task. They're ready for a joke, right? Did you have a similar experience with this film? Yeah, I, I really felt like if it, the, the script itself was so good that all we had to yeah. do was really, really commit to the presence without winking at the camera. The more straighter we played it, the funnier it was. Like this guy that I'm playing, unfortunately thinks that what he's doing is the absolute best course of action and that he's the hero of this <laughs> horrific thing that he's doing. I, I think all of us have been guilty about that in a sometime in our lives. I love it. Let's take a listen to a clip from the movie. Ooh. Took some steps in setting healthy boundaries and blocked my dad online. He's never really been there for me when I needed him, and I'm done with that. Did you delete your profile? It's kind of the main way I was uh, staying in touch with you. My ex blocked me when I just started a different age, under a different name. I met someone online. She's like smart, funny. This girl's the love of my life. Keep your expectations low. She could be like mean or, or a scammer or, I mean, or your dad. <laughs> 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 so did you ever find yourself a little uncomfortable while filming some real awkward parenting moments? A little? Oh my God. There are scenes that when I was when I was filming them, I was uncomfortable. And then what was even weirder was when we showed it at South by Southwest, at that point I'd seen the movie uh -huh. uh, and I knew how uncomfortable the scenes were, but then watching it with an audience, people around you, and people <laughs> are just like watching it through their hand. Like I there were <laughs> there's two there's two scenes especially where I wanted to bolt out of the movie. You'll know the ones I'm talking about when you see them. Uh yeah, it was pretty incredible. That's good. So so what was it like to be this catfishing dad? I mean, you're a father yourself. Did you find yourself relating in any way? I, I certainly didn't sympathize. I can't understand the, 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 the parental um, motivation to want to avoid your kids when they're young, which is what this character sure. did. And now he's realizing way after the fact. So, you know, playing that realization felt really real. But the actual not wanting to be around your kids just felt very alien to me. It still does. Yeah, I can agree with that. This film, yeah, though, it does a really good... Yeah, so this film does a great job kind of immersing us in each character's perspective, even though a lot of the interactions yeah. are happening virtually, so you're not just seeing, like, yes. text bubbles on the screen. So tell us about that. 
<laughs> yeah, they, um, James you, uh, thought of a great device where the, the girl that I make up to catfish my son with, who's played by Claudia Saluski, who's an amazing actress, and she just actually appears as herself to then interact with him to do the lines that I'm writing. And then yeah. we see her playing the actual Becca later in the film. So it's a really cool device to bring you to the immediacy of what's happening emotionally. I agree, I agree. And by the way, all based on a true story, the actual experience of the writer, director, and your co-star, James Morosini. Did you know that right away? And I have to know, I mean, did you ever meet his dad? Uh, his dad came to a screening in South by Southwest. I wasn't there for that screening, but we did all Zoom together for an interview with the New York Times. So I met him over Zoom. I've yet to meet him face to face. But yes, when I read on the title page, based on a true story, I thought James was doing the, like a Coen Brothers style joke. And then uh -huh. as we met and started talking about it, he goes, we were going through a bad time and I blocked him and he, tr and I was like, oh my God. Well, then that made me want to make the movie even more. You know, like, sure. oh, I really got to do it. Yeah, some real experience to draw from. Uh, yes. So, look, you wear a lot of hats, but you're a comedian first. And you <laughs> have to know, okay, that I have loved your stand-up for years. And I want you to know oh. that as often as I can, I accuse people of wasting cake and paper. Well, oh, my God. Thank <laughs> you. That's, I really hope that catches on. There don't need to be that many birthdays. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. You just made me you're, so happy. <laughs> you're very, very welcome. And you have a whole new hour of stand-up coming to Netflix next month. So what can we, yes. what can I look forward to? And where are you drawing your inspiration from? <laughs> I mean, look around you. Look at the world we're stuck in right now. My yeah. special comes out next month on Netflix, September 20th. Uh, basically, it is Pat Oswalt reacting to the year 2022, which that's all you need to know. It is basically, yeah. we are being faced with such an avalanche of absurdity mm -hmm. that in a way that the special, I mean, it's funny and goofy, but it's basically me trying to keep my sanity. Oh, I hear you. And I need that in my life. Pat and Oswalt, thank you thank so you. much for being on the show. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. And you can watch I Love My Dad in theaters starting tomorrow and streaming next week. We have more fun on this show, by the way. Still to come. Cocktail Creations. They have made this guy so popular. He has millions of people following him online now. So we talked to the tipsy bartender about what inspires his daring drinks in this week's TikTok. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions, straightforward reporting, no spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24 Seven. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. The most powerful stories of our time, anytime. Nightline. Ready for a little GMA ish promo? Okay, here we go. GMA 7A every day with Robin, George, and Michael. That's how you start the day. Boom! America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. We now turn to our weekly segment, TikTok, where we take a closer look at the story behind the sensation. And y'all, this is a good one. Are you in the mood for a martini, margarita, maybe a new summer drink? I mean, it is Thursday. I don't know. Our next guest may have just what you're looking for. Sky John, best known to his 7 million followers on TikTok, at the real tipsy bartender, teaches us how to think 
outside of the box or bottle when it comes to creating tasty drinks. Take a look. It's time! Ah. Fruit salad. Vodka. And tequila. Okay. Let's go together. I got box wine. I got another box on this side, okay? Coconut rum. Everclear. Got another Everclear. Woo! Got a vodka. Woo! Silver rum. Woo! Got another rum. <laughs> oh, I love it, Sky. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It's sort of like controlled chaos watching you make drinks. Yeah, it is. It is a little bit. <laughs> so where do you but draw a, your inspiration? But there's a logic to the madness. I believe you. I believe you. So let's talk about that. How do you draw your influence from your Caribbean and Bohemian roots into making these drinks? In the Bahamas and the, the Caribbean in general, a lot of the drinks tend to be on the sweeter side. So mm -hmm. that translates into my drinks because the typical American guy is not going to walk around with strawberry daiquiris and cherries and candies <laughs> on their drink. But coming from the Bahamas where we embrace sugar, you know, good or bad, it, it works, you know, because it's different because not a lot of people are going to do that. Because you look at a lot of my drinks, people go, oh, man, that's too sweet, but it's fun. Yeah, it's sweet, but it's fun. Also, you're known for getting creative, not just with your ingredients, but also how you serve the drinks, which I love in particular using, I mean, kitchen sinks, fish bowls, watermelons, <laughs> some real cloud, uh, crowd pleasers there. How did you become so resourceful? Well, it's, it's me and, and my, my girlfriend, pretty much. We look around, and if, it can, if, it, if, if it's a container in any form, I make it work. So we put drinks in pineapples, we put drinks in apples. You name the fruit, we've done it. Bathtub. <laughs> I haven't done a toilet bowl yet, but it's coming. Okay, well, I suppose we'll have to wait and see that. <laughs> um, so tell us a little bit about your DIY ice cubes and how effective they can be in creating those really fun, tasty drinks. Yeah, because remember now, ice cubes... You know, you just look at that as being something to chill a, to chill a drink. Right. But it's so much more than that because you could fill your ice cube with regular water and then add in strawberries. So now you have strawberry-flavored water in your drink as those ice cubes begin to dissolve. Because remember, as, a, as the strawberry is sitting there and it's freezing, that, that flavor and that taste is going to just permeate the water. So now you have this, 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 this infused ice cube. Or... Looking at you, I'm going to guess you like wine. I don't know that you drink, but I'm going to just go on and let it say that you like wine. Okay. It's summer. So here's what you do. You take like a rosé. Let's say you mm -hmm. like rosé or chardonnay, merlot, and you pour it in the ice cube tray, and you put that in the freezer, and it's going to freeze. It's not going to freeze solid like water because, you know, ice um, alcohol does not freeze at the same time right, as right. water. But you can create like a nice slushy. So now you have a wine slushy. So that already sounds refreshing, okay? We, we haven't even done it yet. This is just talking about it. And then you put some <laughs> fruits in there, and now you have a drink. Uh, sounds like a good idea, my friend. And for our viewers who are building their bar at home, I mean, you have a lot going on there behind you. What are some of the oh, yeah, staples yeah. that you would recommend if someone was starting to build up their bar at home? Well, just just the basics. I have a bartending course on YouTube, if you're curious. But you know, like vodka, rum, gin, tequila. Okay, they, they are four mains that, that you're going to use. Um, if you went to whiskey, whiskey mixologists, guys who are really experts at mixing drinks, use whiskey as a base, but most people can't do that. So, you know, you might have your Jack and Coke and your, your, your Jamesons and, and the Irish whiskeys. You can have those on the side. But the main things, vodka, rum, gin, tequila, and a whiskey that you like for your guest or whomever's coming over. But with those four, you could just get mixers and have fun. Okay, I love it. You know, I'm also in Los Angeles. I know you are as well. It's been a little toasty out here, a little hot. What is your signature uh -huh. summer drink? Okay, well, automatically, just by looking at the kitchen sink drink that you've been showing, I'm the king of jungle <laughs> juice. Second to no one. Yeah. No one on planet Earth, I can safely say, has made as many jungle juices as I have. Even if you're in college, <laughs> I got you beat. Okay, <laughs> so I would get a larger container, Drop in your favorite fruits, you know, watermelons, strawberries, raspberries, blackberries, that kind, you know, the, the honeydew, um, cantaloupe. Put those in, and then you want to start just adding a ton of vodka 
And on top of that, just to make this simple, you could come with like a Hawaiian punch. If you don't like a Hawaiian punch, you feel that like something like that's too sweet, get a bunch of LaCroix or, you know, truly oh, whatever yeah. flavored wa those, 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 um, those uh, sparkling waters out there right now and make that your mixer. So now you have a beautiful, flavorful drink that's not overly sweet and it's perfect for the summer and it's colorful because of all the fruits you put in and you just kill the game, okay? With just vodka as your base, and those, those um, LaCroix, and game over. My man. All right. Well, next time I have a party, you better be coming, Sky. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> all right. Thank you for having me. Stay tipsy. Of course. And uh, you can find all his fun cocktail reps recipes on his website at tipsybartender.com. I mean, who is ready for the weekend, right? That is our show for tonight. Stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. I'm Kana Whitworth. Thank you so much for streaming with us.